Gopichan Vallabha Giripada Chari Gopichan Vallabha Giripada Chari Yashoda Nandan Havraja Janaranjana Yashoda Nandan Havraja Janaranjana Yamuna Tiyavancha Yamuna Tira Vanchari Jaya Rata Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Rata Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Gopi Jana Balaba Giri Varatari Jaya Gopi Jana Balaba Yashodananda <laughs> Today is it the disappearance of Jagadish or Jaydev Goswami? Is it? Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Sri Jaydev Goswami, 300 years before the appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Jayadeva Goswami served as the court part of Sri Lakshmi Sena, King of Bengal. Jayadeva and Padmavati, his wife and an expert dancer, used to worship Lord Sri Krishna with single-minded devotion. 
after some time, he left the opulent royal life to live peacefully in a grass hut in Champa Hutti, Navadwi. Jayadev wrote Gita Govinda. One day, while working on Gita Govinda, Jayadev felt inspired to write, Krishna bows down to touch the lotus feet of Srimati Radharani. Jayadev was hesitant to say something that might diminish Lord Krishna's position as Supreme Godhead. He began to refresh himself again before honouring Radhamadava Mahaprasad. In his absence, Krishna himself disguised as Jayadev came to the house of the poet, he wrote a line in the Gita Govinda, De Padapalavam Udaram, and accepted Prasadam from Padmavati. Upon returning, Jayadev was astonished to see the line. Understanding the mystery, Jayadev cried in spiritual joy and said, Padna Padmavati, we are most fortunate. Sri Krishna himself has written the line, De Padapalavam Udaram, and taken Prasadam from your hand. Gita Govinda expresses the intense feelings of separation that Sri Radhika felt before the Rasa dance. She also describes the most intimate pastimes of Radha Shem Sundar during Lord Chaitanya's Gambira Leela in a Jagannath Puri. He would thoroughly relish hearing the Gita Govinda sung daily by Srup Damodar and Mukunda. After finishing Gita Govinda, Jade visited Vrindavan and then lived his last in Jagannath Puri. He introduced daily reading of Gita Govinda in the temple for the pleasure of Lord Jagannath. So this line, Dehi Pada Palavam Udaram, means let your feet adore uh, my head. I don't know actually if that's meant to be adore or adorn. So it's described also one shouldn't try to read Gita Govinda in the early stages of devotion and service because and it's very advanced uh, for young devotees to read such things. And uh, if we try to understand these things before we're properly purified, then it's uh, may have some inappropriate thoughts. Whereas Srila Prabhupada has written Krishna book, so that we can understand Krishna's pastimes in a proper mood. Srila Prabhupada said, in, particularly in the West, she called the time Mahaprasashi, Ki Jai. Particularly in the West, we tend to want to take things cheaply. We want everything now. Uh, just like one of what's the most one of the most popular shops in the city centre? Huh? <laughs> Poundland? Did you say? Yeah, maybe for you. <laughs> so many bargains, right? <laughs> but one of the most popular ones is uh, the chemists and the. I, mean, I shouldn't advertise, but boots the chemists. We used to notice whenever we went to a we look to see where a boots is because that's where so many people go. They want makeup, they want this to fix their body, they want things to make them better. So much in the bodily concept. <clears throat> so, um, I forgot the point about that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so, so people want. If you want immediate relief, that's natural and Kaluga. We don't have much patience, we just want everything we want to enjoy. And as soon as there's any discomfort, we just immediately want to extinguish that discomfort to get back to the um, <coughs> So it's natural and Kaluga. Take things cheaply, but I want to learn properly. So, therefore, the versus the Shasta, which Lord Chaitanya, versus of all, is cheated. Arm, cleaning the mind, and then uh, chanting and ping the, the humble mood. These things are very important before we become from desire. By doing this, we become free from the desire. And so, speak a bit more of that class. So, right, we've got Neto and Voshim Shula Bhagavan Ki. So, we're in the preface. 
activists, every service has some attractive feature which drives the separately on and on, which is what we're reading about in the uh, Bible time. Starting from last year, the different levels of devotion service. Everyone who lives within the world is perpetually engaged in some sort of service, and the impetus for such service is the pleasure we derive from it. Driven by affection for his wife and children, a family man works day and night. This works in the same way for love of the greater family, nationalist for the cause of his country. That force Lives of one person, a household, and an action is called rasa or a kind of mellow relationship whose taste is very sweet. But to rasa is a mellow from the hobby rasa enjoyed by mundane workers. Mundane workers labour hard day and night in order to further a certain rasa to their sense gratification. The relish or taste of the mundane workers has not long endure, and for mundane workers, always an attitude. Of enjoyment. A businessman is not satisfied by working the whole week, therefore, wanting a change for the weekend to a place where he tries to forget his business activities. Then, after the weekend spent in forgetfulness, he again changes and resumes actual business activities. Material engagement is accepting a privileged state of time and changing it. This position of changing back and forth, technically known as Bogatiag, which is a position. A living end cannot steadily remain in sentient or in renunciation. Changes is not perpetual to make happy in either because of our no constitutional position. Sense gratification does not last for long and it is therefore called chapala sukha or offering happiness. For example, an only family man who worked very hard day and night is successful in giving comfort to the members. Thereby relishes a kind of mellow, but this whole advancement of material happiness immediately terminates along with his body's relief. This is therefore taken as the atheistic class. The devotion realizes the presence of God by devotion and service, whereas the is the presence of God in the shape of death. At death, everything is finished and one has to begin a new chapter of life in a new situation, perhaps higher or lower than the last one. In any field of activity, political, social, national or international, the result of our actions will be finished with the end of life. That is sure. So Prabhupada ki jai. Jibakteya Samrita Sindhu ki jai. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om no From Shima Canto Sin, Chapter Five, the Saintly Son of Yashipu, Texts Number. And Chain of election, 
ಕ್ರಿಯತೆ ಭಗವತ್ಯದ ತನ್ಮನ್ಯೇತಮ ಶ್ರಾವಣ ಕೀರ್ತನ ವಿಷ್ಣು Okay, we'll just read the translation. Pralad Maharaj said, hearing and chanting about the transcendental holy name, form qualities, paraphernalia and pastimes of the Lord Vishnu, remembering them, serving the lotus feet of the Lord, offering the Lord respectful be- uh, worship with 16 types of paraphernalia, offering prayers to the Lord, becoming his servant, considering the Lord one's best friend and surrendering everything unto him, in other words, serving him with the body, mind and words. These nine processes are accepted as pure devotion service. One who has dedicated his life to the service of Krishna through these nine methods should be understood to be the most learned person for he has acquired complete knowledge. Carrying on purport, we're now on point eight, Sakyam. In regard to worshipping the Lord as a friend, the Agastya Samhita states that a devotee engaged in performing the work served by Shravanam and Kirtanam sometimes want to see the Lord personally. <clears throat> and for this purpose he resides in the temple. Elsewhere, there is the statement, O oh my Lord, working personal of Supreme Personality and Eternal Friend, although you are full of bliss and knowledge, you have become the friend of the residents of Vrindavan. How fortunate are these devotees? In this statement, the word friend is specifically used to indicate intense love. Friendship, therefore, is better than servitude. In the stage above the Asharas, the devotee accepts the Supreme Personality of Godhead as a friend. This is not at all astonishing, for when a devotee is pure in heart, the audience of his worship of the deity diminishes as spontaneous love for the person of the Godhead is manifested. In this regard, Sridhar Swami mentions Sridhama Vipra, who expressed to himself his feelings of obligation, thinking, life after life, may I be connected with Krishna in this friendly attitude. Om Ajnana Timaranda Shya Gyananjana Slakaya Chaitrin Militam Yanatasma Shri Gurveen Maha Kam Kroti Vachalam Oh, sorry, I didn't even notice that. Tam Kroti Vachalam Pangam Lagayate Grim Yad Kripa Tamaham Vande Shri Grim Dinatarnam Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhanityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasari Gora Bhakti Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Thanks for it. Prahlad Maharaj said, hearing and chanting about transcendental holy name, form, qualities, paraphernalia, and pastimes, Lord Vishnu, remembering them, serving the lotus feet of the Lord, offering the Lord respectful worship with 16 types of paraphernalia. <clears throat> These 16 types of paraphernalia is called upachar, which is what we do behind the curtain, the deities of worship with these different upachars or different items. Offering prayers to the Lord, becoming his servant, considering the Lord one's best friend and surrendering everything unto him. In other words, serving him with the body, mind and words. These nine processes are accepted as pure devotion service. One who has dedicated his life to the service of Krishna through these nine methods should be understood to be the most learned person for he has acquired complete knowledge. Interesting, Sri Prabhupada has set this one up in such a way as we can engage in all of these processes. So beginning with hearing and chanting, this is what we do first thing in the morning. What do we do? Or what should we be doing? 
Thank you. Yeah, the first thing we do in the morning is we try to uh, <coughs> show the backstand to Saraswati Tiger who said that in the morning we should beat the mind with a stick and in the evening beat it with a shoe. <coughs> <coughs> So uh, writes in his prayer, my dear mind, you're no Vaishnava. So this is a relief because sometimes we think we're the one that's not the Vaishnava, but actually we're eternally related to Krishna. It's just with this conditioned mind. We relate to that and we think, oh, I'm, I'm not a devotee, I'll never be a devotee. It's nonsense. We're eternally a devotee. We've just forgotten it. And this process of Shravanam Kirtanam begins with this, as soon as we waking up, waking up and our eyes open, or even before your eyes are open, then you immediately pay obeisances to your spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, the deities. And if you know which direction they're in, then you generally pay your obeisances pointing towards them, because immediately they're in the centre of your life as soon as you're awake. And throughout our whole day, our life is dedicated to the service of spiritual master and the Lord, Lord's mission. And so much so that even sometimes sleep. We're getting dreams like we're out on Harina or we're in Sankatana or we're doing some service or we're preaching to somebody <clears throat> and uh, or we find ourselves in a situation and we're taking shelter of the holy name. So in this way we can become Krishna conscious 24 hours a day and Prabhupada set up it's gone in such a way that this is uh, what he's giving us this nine processes of devotional service. So now uh, we'll speak a little bit about this Sakyam. So I thought it'd be interesting to um, make a little comparison. So this friendliness, it comes after Dasya and Dasya. It's not that we skip Dasya and then we go into Sakya because underlying all the grasses in servitorship. And uh, let me just but first we also have to see the difference between mundane friendship and um, transcendental friendship. Let's see if I can find this chapter. Yeah, so before we can come to this kind of level of spontaneous devotional service, then we have to perform devotional service. So in the Nectar of Devotion and in Bhagavad Gita, uh, we shall see some points here which help us understand. So Rubik Swami stated five kinds of devotional service, namely residing in a holy place, worshipping the deity of the Lord, reciting the holy scriptures, serving a devotee, and chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. They're so potent that a small attachment for any one of these five items can arouse devotional ecstasy, even in a neophyte. And sometimes we experience that. Isn't that right, Kartike? Yeah, sometimes we experience the bliss of uh, Nidra Yoga. Connecting with the Lord through sleep. <laughs> There's some experts here on that one. <clears throat> that we um, we might be attached or attracted to the Lord in different ways or different aspects of devotion service. We may be uh, attracted to one aspect more than another. But in due course of time, we become more attracted to other ones as well. So we shouldn't simply think they're material conditioning as a reflection of what our eternal relationship is. And Prabhupada says that we should become, come to the point where we're equally enthusiastic about any service. So we don't want to take the risk of just saying, well, I can only do this and just limit ourselves. Because Krishna says he has the ability. So when we think, just like Shri Prabhupada told Jadurani to paint uh, Krishna, become an artist, and she, you see in the early books, the paintings she did were quite childish, you know, like quite uh, crude cartoon type drawings. But because they were painted with devotion, they're very attractive. And she became on the order of her spiritual master, although she didn't have the expertise that she has now, then she did it. We, um, so she excelled in that. 
So with the order of the spirit master comes the ability to do that because Krishna is the ability. And when Krishna sees us making an endeavor, he gives the ability uh, to either do that thing or to get the, the realization and the fruit of whatever that attempt would be. For example, the, the uh, instance where Lord Chaitanya met this uh, devotee <clears throat> who was trying to read Bhagavad Gita, but he didn't know how to read. He had the book upside down. He didn't even know which way he was up which way he was down and uh, but still he was crying in ecstasy because he'd understood that Krishna is uh, so amazing that even though he's the supreme person of Godhead he's quite happy to take the position of being a Arjuna's charioteer so this is uh, showing how much the devotees mean to Krishna how this how the Supreme Lord is also humble. It's not that everyone else has to be humble, and he's not humble. He's the origin of all qualities, and uh, <clears throat> therefore that means he can excel all in humility as well. So, and with the purport, uh, yeah, regarding words of the form of the Lord or deity, Rubi Swami has written the following verse. My dear friend, if you still have any desire to enjoy the company of your friends within this material world, then don't look upon the form of Krishna. So it's too late for everybody. You've seen him. <laughs> Who is standing on the bank of Keshigat? A bathing place in Vrindavan. Just like every day we sing Yamuna Tira Vanachari. He's wandering along the banks of the Yamuna. He is known as Govinda and his eyes are very enchanting. He is playing upon his flute and on his head there is a peacock feather and his whole body is illuminated by the moonlight in the sky. So the purpose of this verse is that if someone becomes attached to the Srimurti or deity of Krishna by worshipping at home, of course that's for those who don't live at the temple, then he will forget his relationships of so-called friendship, love and society. Thus, it is the duty of every householder to install deities of Lord at home and to begin the process of worshipping along with all his family members. So, of course, for those who live at the temple, once again, then uh, there's no need to create extra worship when there's worship going on here. This will save everyone from such unwanted activities such as going to clubs, cinemas and dancing parties and smoking, drinking, etc. All such nonsense will be forgotten if one stresses the worship of the deities at home. <clears throat> so here, uh, this material friendship we have, um, we can remain the well-wisher of, I think this is mentioned there. I think it might have been Bhagavad Okay, so there was, um, <clears throat> I just want to read a little bit from Bhagavad Gita and then a little bit more from Nectar of Devotion. <clears throat> so we have so many friends, relatives in the material world and when we become a devotee, then we actually become the real friend. Our friendship in the material world consists generally of helping each other overcome the threefold miseries of life uh, or gratifying each other's senses or having some kind of a same kind of flavors in common. <clears throat> I like to do the same kind of things. But when we become a devotee, then we become the real friend because we can actually then uh, bring some real pleasure and relief into their life. So in the Fourth canto, <clears throat> uh, verse 20, no, chapter 20, verse 60. Then uh, 
This uh, material friendship and family relationship is described as follows. As water passes down a river, many straws and grasses are carried from the shore. These straws and grasses come together in the river's, river's current. But when the waves toss this way and that, they are separated and carried somewhere else. Similarly, the innumerable living entities within this material world have been carried by the waves of material nature. Sometimes the waves bring them together and they form friendships and relate to one another on a bodily basis of family, community or nationality. Eventually, they're thrown out of association by the waves of material nature. And it's interesting to note that sometimes people who are enemies in one life may become family members in another life and vice versa. It's even mentioned that sometimes you become, if, you, uh, if you're indebted to someone, then you may have to take birth in the same family where you can work out that debt. <clears throat> so it might be the very person you don't want to be with. So there's a, nothing escapes a law of karma. But when we become a devotee, then we can um, find the real relationships. Yeah, so the mundane friendships we have, we shouldn't confuse with this with Sakiras, the relationship between Krishna, and not just prematurely think, oh, you know, I don't want to serve, I just want to be Krishna's buddy. <coughs> You know, Prabhupada says, first of all, deserve and then desire. So to deserve, to deserve, then we have to, uh, we'll just read about Bhagavad Gita, actually. This brings us to that point, actually, that um, chapter 11, universal form. So in this chapter, Krishna reveals the universal form to Arjuna, and it's, uh, it's quite a frightening form. Although Arjuna is the eternal associate of Krishna, then he's, uh, he's quite frightened by this form. Because it's um, he sees Krishna as all devouring death. And even before the battle has taken place, he sees all the soldiers rushing into the blazing mouths of Krishna. And he sees all the demigods situated within the Lord and basically sees the Lord as being the origin of everything. So, start from verse 11, uh, verse 14. So he's seen uh, many wondrous and horrifying sights there because everything is within Krishna. And then he says, uh, he began to pray. He was bewildered and astonished. Then bewildered and astonished, his hair standing on end, Arjuna bowed his head to offer obeisances with folded hands and began to pray to the Supreme Lord. So Prabhupada spoke. But once a divine vision is revealed, the relationship between Krishna and Arjuna changes immediately. Before Krishna and Arjuna had a relationship based on friendship, but here, after the revelation, Arjuna is offering obeisances with great respect and with folded hands. He is praying to Krishna. He's praising the universal form. Thus, Arjuna's relationship becomes one of wonder rather than friendship. Great devotees see Krishna as a reservoir of all relationships. In the scriptures, there are 12 basic kinds of relationship mentioned, and all of them are present in Krishna. It is said that he is the ocean of all the relationships exchanged between two living entities, between the gods, or between the Supreme Lord and his devotees. Here, Arjuna was inspired by the relationship of wonder. And in that wonder, although he was by nature very sober, calm and quiet, he became ecstatic, his head cleared up, and he began to offer his obeisances unto the Supreme Lord with folded hands. He was not, of course, afraid. He was affected by the wonders of the Supreme Lord. Immediate context is wonder. His natural living friendship was overwhelmed by wonder, and thus he reacted in this way. So he wasn't bewildered, although it says bewildered here. He wasn't bewildered in the sense that uh, he forgot his 
natural love and friendship was overwhelmed by because his, his base Rasa there being uh, sacked when he seen the Lord in this form but he, he wasn't like frightened in a materialistic way so uh, further in the same chapter then Arjuna says to uh, to Krishna, Saketi Matva Prasabam Yaduktam. Saketi means friend. Thinking of you as my friend, I've rashly addressed you, O Krishna, O Yadava, O my friend, not knowing your glories, please forgive whatever I've done in madness or in love. I have dishonored you many times, jesting as we relax, lay on the same bed, or sat or ate together, sometimes alone and sometimes in front of many friends. O infallible one, please excuse me for all those offences. So underlying, we see underlying the uh, Sakiras is the Dasharas as well, <clears throat> but also um, Prabhupada mentions the proper, although um, Arjuna is admitting that he um, he was feeling that he'd somehow or another transgressed because he was feeling the on reverence aspect. He's feeling he'd transgressed that relationship of the living entity and the Supreme Lord. And here Prabhu says, but Krishna is so kind and merciful that in spite of such opulence, he played with Arjuna as a friend. Such is the transcendental loving reciprocation between the devotee and the Lord. The relationship between the living entity and Krishna is fixed eternally. It cannot be forgotten, as we have seen from the behavior of Arjuna. Although Arjuna has seen the opulence in the universal form, he cannot forget his friend, the relationship with Krishna. So, and that becomes evident as we go on here. So um, Arjuna says, as a father tolerates the impudence of his son, a friend, the impudence of a friend, husband, the familiarity of his wife, please tolerate the wrong that I have done. And uh, in a purport, uh, Prabhupada says, Krishna's devotees relate to Krishna in various relationships. One might treat Krishna as a son, one might treat Krishna as a husband, as a friend or as a master. Krishna and Arjuna are related in friendship. As the father tolerates, or the husband or a master tolerates, so Krishna tolerates. So Krishna didn't see any offence, although in the moment of seeing the universal form, Arjuna was seeing the wonder of Krishna. Um, but Krishna didn't see that there was any offence. So this is an indication for us is that we have to actually um, ob observe, first of all, on reverence, uh, before we can go anywhere beyond that, if that is where we belong. Let's see. Okay, so, um, so Krishna qualifies here, leading up to the 12th chapter, which is Krishna explaining about devotional service and the different uh, grades of devotional service. Then he's qualifying this. So upon uh, Arjuna's request, then Krishna displayed his four-armed form and at last showed his two-armed form, thus encouraging the fearful Ar Arjuna. So Krishna uh, revealed this because this is the relationship between Arjuna and Krishna. And Arjuna is much more comfortable in that relationship. At the end of the purport here, then uh, Prabhupada says, he just banished the fear of Arjuna, his devotee, and showed him again his beautiful form of Krishna. In the Ram Samhita is stated, Premanjana Churiti Bhakti Chanena. Only a person who has Eyes, uh, whose eyes are smeared with the ointment of love can see the beautiful form of Sri Krishna. So this uh, loving devotional service 
it begins with um, sad and ability. In the beginning, we love so many things. Primarily, we love ourself, and then when it loves us, or anything which is favourable to our mind and senses, we love that. <clears throat> but the the regulation is there as to so we can transcend this temporary uh, picking and choosing on a material platform, and come to the point of actually learning to love Krishna first of all through Jesus. So, text fifty one. When Arjuna thus saw Krishna in his original form, he said, O Janardhan, seeing this human like form so very beautiful, I am now composed in mind, I am restored to my original nature. So we see this is Arjuna is very comfortable in this. And uh, Arjuna and Krishna, they take, uh, they appear in many different uh, times, as Nara and Narayan Rishi, for example, they appeared. So they're not just like, it's not like Arjuna just happened to be Krishna's friend in this lifetime. Or he's, um, you know, in the spiritual world, and he just comes down for this. You know, he isn't so many times in instances. A relationship is that he's, he's always there. And it's one of Krishna's qualities. He's always surrounded by loving uh, devotees in these different relationships. So, text 52, Krishna says, My dear Arjuna, this form of men you are now seeing is very difficult to behold. Even the demigods who are ever seeking the opportunity to see this form which is so dear. So from this we can understand that it's not a cheap thing. And uh, he explains, the, the form you're seeing with your transcendental eyes cannot be understood simply by studying the Vedas, nor by undergoing serious penances nor by charity, nor by worship. It's not by this mean that one can see me as I am. All right. So what's the point of all our austerities and worship then? If we can't see Krishna after all that. So how is it then that we see Krishna? Huh? Love and devotion. Yeah. Only by undivided devotion and service can I be understood as I am standing before you and can thus be seen directly. Only in this way can you enter into the mysteries of my understanding. So this means Ekeha um, Kurunandana, O beloved child of the Kurus with single-pointed attention, one who has given up Boga Aishwarya, Boga and Aishwarya, the attraction to sense enjoyment and material opulence. And uh, so, in other words, we have to see everything in relation to Krishna. See everything in relation to Krishna. Utilize everything in Krishna's service. And take every opportunity we can for devotion and service. Also, within that, we have to create a balance so that we can spend this whole life in Krishna's service. So that at the end of this life, then, that devotion and service continues in the spiritual world. So Krishna explains, my dear Arjuna, he who engages in my pure devotion service free from the contamination of fruit of activities and mental speculation, who works for me, who makes me the supreme goal of life, and who is friendly to every living, he certainly comes to me. And so Krishna says, you know, in the ninth chapter, yam yam vapi sarambhavam, whatever you think of at the time of death, that state you will attain, and what we think of is what we're most attached to, we try to hold on to that. So what we're most attached to is Krishna, then where do we go? We'll go back to Krishna. And Krishna says, certainly we'll do that. <clears throat> there's no doubt about it. Because there's nothing in the material world that can uh, oppose Krishna. Krishna is a duty, he's unconquerable. So if we learn to take Krishna's... We learn to take shelter in Krishna, through all the trials and tribulations in life, and typically at the end of life, our natural first port of call when there's any danger is to go to Krishna. So this we can practice. Sometimes we take shot on other things, like um, sometimes we, if we, in some difficult situation, we may take shot and uttering some swear words or something like that, <clears throat> or we uh, punch a wall, or we uh, take out someone else or something. You know, we've all got our ways of taking shelter in the material world, but ultimately we want to be taking shelter in Krishna. So, oh, I didn't manage it that time. Next time, I'm going to do it next time. Oh, I didn't manage it this time either. Next time. So we keep trying. <clears throat> and by that trying, Krishna, will, he'll be there. 
The fact that we're chanting Krishna's name means that Krishna is there already. Don't think that we're chanting and Krishna will appear. He's already appeared. He shown us that favor, the fact that we're chanting. The fact that we're hearing about him and we're seeing him. He's reciprocating already with us. <clears throat> so this um, last verse of the 11th chapter culminates in bringing us to devotional service, which is um, the 12th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. And in that chapter, Krishna explains about the different levels of devotional service. And they're all significant because they, um, they give the living entity an opportunity, whatever stage they're at, to begin in devotional service. He, does, he says, that, although he doesn't say they're all equal, and they're different grades of devotional service, different uh, steps of surrender. <clears throat> but still, so he says, if you cannot do this, then do that. If you can do this, do that. But it's not that they're equal. It's not that um, someone who does a little for Krishna is equal to someone who does a lot. You you can't say someone who Hare Krishna once is the same as someone who dedicates their whole life you know, to uh, devotional service <clears throat> and the mission of the Lord. But they're equal in the sense that it's all transcendental, and ultimately those who they might not even be able to do much, but they're not against devotion and service, Krishna says, ultimately, if they're not averse, even if they're not able to do anything, if they're not averse, they attain the same destination. So sometimes we see that, or we may have friends who they know about Krishna, but they're uh, maybe too attached or too involved in the material life. They might not be doing much just now, but because they're not opposed, then they will get opportunity to take to that. And uh, just as um, we are also getting the opportunity, and many opportunities are coming. So just a, a little bit of nectar from the nectar of devotion. Let's see if we can find chapter 41. So as we go through reading this systematically, next to devotion, we get, we get a clear understanding of the difference between the uh, material version of these and the transcendental. And we see that Krishna's uh, eternal friends, they relate to him in different ways, even as friends, just like we have different types of friends as well. Some friends relate to his one way and relate in another way. So this is chapter 40. Uh, 42, is it? 40, well, 41 and 42. But I won't read them all, just read a little bit. When a devotee is permanently situated in devotional service, I am by, and by different symptoms of ecstasy has developed and matured a fraternal mellow or flavor in relation with the personality of Godhead. His feeling is called fraternal love of Godhead. So this word mature is very important, actually. Uh, Prabhupada was always very keen in telling us not to jump. Don't jump like a monkey. Monkeys are jumping from one tree to another, so we should be very careful not to just uh, prematurely. Was it Jan and Dermaj refers to premature, premature early, <coughs> prematurely? Good word, Smith. <coughs> so premature. So then, Prabhupada here is talking about developing and maturing. So. We don't want, just like uh, if, you've, if you've ever made a loaf of bread and you take it out of the oven too early, it's, it's half-baked, it's kind of useless. It's neither a loaf nor is it dough. You can't knead it again and put it back in the oven. And uh, you, you can't, you try to put it back in the oven, you might get somewhere with it. But So we don't want to have a half-baked version of Krishna consciousness. We want to have the real baked version. So that means put it in the oven, follow the directions. If you put all the right ingredients in, it's at the right setting, just leave it in for the right amount of time. So the same with our devotional service. Therefore, Rupa Goswami is, stresses upon us to be uh, patient. 
And while we're patient, we still we have not matured, so we may not experience the ecstasies which you're hearing about, but we are hearing about them, and sometimes we see advanced devotees who experience them. And in their association, you know, we see that these devotees continue despite whatever reverses might be there. When some devotees are blissful, regardless what comes their way, <clears throat> they're humble in any situation. You can't out-humble the actual humble. <clears throat> I remember one time, um, Jananandam Rajan and myself was having a conversation and he was being humble and I was trying to be humble, but I realised I couldn't compete with him. And uh, it was... It was quite difficult because you could you can try to be as humble as you are, and then you can try to feign it, but then it becomes pretentious. And then you see someone who's really humble, and you can't out-humble them, so therefore you feel humbled by their uh, humility. And you realise, I'm thinking I'm humble, I'm trying to be humble, but really this devotee is uh, showing some true humility. Out of their kindness, sometimes they show that. They show that. <clears throat> so this impetus for such fraternal love of God is God himself. So just like someone says, oh, how did you become attracted to Krishna consciousness? You say, oh, I read book, I did this, I did that. But actually, Krishna is all attractive. That's how he became attracted. <clears throat> because Krishna is all attractive. He naturally attracts us. The material world become attracted to Krishna's external energy. Maybe in the form of a person or an object or a place or something like that. <clears throat> this is Krishna's attractive potency in the material world. And Prabhupada says this is a dim reflection of the beauty in the spiritual world, the beauty of the landscape, the beauty of the people, the beauty of uh, the relationships. These are dim reflections. So we shouldn't think that by giving something up in the material world, we're actually losing we're actually gaining because we're giving up something lower for something higher. And when we give up things in the material world, we don't lose and they don't lose because of the connection with us as a devotee, then they benefit. It's like even sometimes people are inimical and because they're thinking of those Hare Krishnas are such a nuisance, those Hare Krishnas, Hare Krishnas, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare. They may be not chanting the full mantra, but they're chanting the name and surrounded by that and there may be some, be some kind of ghastly rants or unfavorable rants to begin with. So just like there was some bad newspaper article in India once and it was the front page of maybe the Hindustani Times or something. And the devotees were a bit concerned, and Prabhupada he was showing it, and he said to one devotee, bring me one uh, ruler. He brought me a ruler, and he measured, it. he measured the words, the big Hare Krishna says, go and find out how much it would cost to have this printed on the front page of the newspaper, Hare Krishna. He found out, he says, we can never afford this, this is very good. He says, the, in, the, in due course of time, they will forget all the bad things that are being said, but they remember Hare Krishna. <clears throat> so this is the mood of the pure devotee. He's always thinking the holy name surpasses everything. It's so auspicious that whatever mud they try to throw around about it, that doesn't stick. But the holy name will penetrate the darkness of a living entity's mind, and it will cleanse our mind. And uh, when we become the real friend of the living entity by taking the Lord's um, message to them, then we become very dear to the Lord. We become Krishna Priya. Vishnu Priya, Gora Priya <coughs> means dear to the Lord. So, uh, and this is how Prabhupada explained that the Disciple cannot repay the debt to the spiritual master because if someone extricates you from the material world and takes you back to Godhead where you live eternally full of bliss and knowledge, then how can you repay that? <clears throat> you can't, but he said, although you cannot repay that, then the disciple can try to repay it simply by taking what he's learned in Krishna consciousness and giving it to others. That's the best way we can try to repay and then we become very dear to the spiritual master. And when we become dear to the spiritual master, automatically we're dear to Krishna because Krishna and the spiritual master are aligned like that. Shagshadari to enhance the master Shastra. So 
so when one is liberated and discovers his eternal relationship with the Supreme Lord, the Lord himself becomes impetus for increasing fraternal love. The eternal associates of the Lord in Vrindavan has described this as follows. The Lord Hari, whose bodily hue is like the Indranil jewel, whose smiling is as beautiful as the Kunda flower, whose silk dress is as yellow as golden autumn foliage, whose chest is beautified with garlands of flowers, and who is always playing upon his flute. This enemy of the Aga demon is always attracting our hearts by wandering about Vrindavan. There are similar statements of fraternal love expressed outside the jurisdiction of Vrindavan. So even uh, in Vrindavan and in other places, the Lord has different types of friends. When the sons of Pandu, headed by Maharaj Yudhisthira, saw Krishna in his four-handed form on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, holding his conch shell disc, club and lotus flower, they completely forgot themselves and became merged in the ocean of nectarian happiness. This shows how the sons of Pandu, Ganyudhisthira, Bhima, Arjuna, Nakula and Sadi were all caught up in fraternal love for Krishna. So, and uh, Shri Prabhupada mentions here hey, what provoke fraternal love. His uncommon genius in all fields of, all fields of uh, endeavor. So you can imagine, first time you read the story of Hiranya Kashipu and Prahlad Maharaj, you're hearing all the benedictions he gets from Lord Brahma, and you're thinking, well, this man is immortal. How can he be killed? He's covered all his bases. You know, there's nothing can be done. You can't be killed indoors or outdoors. That's all you have. You're either in or you're out. <clears throat> you can't be killed in the day or the night. You know, it's either day or night. Can be killed by man or beast, by any weapon. So he covered all his bases. But Krishna is such a genius that he kept all his promises of Brahma intact and still very easily killed him. Killed him in the threshold. He was neither in nor out. In the twilight, it was neither day nor night. It wasn't in the land or the sky. It was on his lap. <laughs> it wasn't by any weapon or man or a beast. It was by a half man, half lion incarnation, and by his fingernail. <clears throat> so Krishna is so. A uh, genius, he can outsmart anyone. Uh, his exhibition of expert knowledge, his mercy, his chivalry, his behaviour as a conjugal lover, his intelligence, his forgiveness, his attraction for all kinds of men, his opulence and his happiness all provoke fraternal love. So um, certainly there's more we can read about here. There's different types of friends, uh, so just a little bit we'll go into this um, because time's getting on. So there's different types of friends. One is called the Vyasyas in Vrindavan. They uh, become greatly distressed when they cannot see Krishna even for a moment. Here's a prayer by a devotee in this relationship. All glories to Krishna's. Vyasyas, who are just like Krishna in their age, quality, pastimes, dress and beauty. They are accustomed to playing on their flutes made of palm leaves. And they all have buffalo horn bugles ornamented like Krishna's with jewels such as Indranila and with gold and coral. They are always jubilant like Krishna. May these glorious companions of Krishna always protect us. And sometimes even Krishna's friends, they have the mood of being like an older friend in the protecting mood of Krishna. Does anyone remember anyone who's like that? Any names? Uh, I think it's Subal, is it? I must say, I forget myself, but there, there are devotees like that. When they hear the demon, they think, okay, where's the demon? I'll protect Krishna. Of course, Krishna doesn't need any protection, but he enjoys this relationship with his devotees. They want to be in that relationship, and he lets them. This is higher <clears throat> than the uh, relationship of... Uh, even Krishna, he enjoys the chastisement of his friends and uh, other devotees, like Taylor's mother chastises him, and he enjoys this more than the personified Vedas praying for forever and a day. But um, that's because they have a particular rasa. 
and that, that develops over time and that would be there for us too we simply just have to follow the the path which is given to us by the great uh, souls so here's another one when krishna was told him to go over down with his left hand uh, the Vyasa friend said, My dear friend, I've been standing for the last seven days and nights without any rest. This is very troublesome for us because we see that you have undertaken a seriously laborious, severely laborious task. We think that you need not continue to stand in that we holding the hill. You can just transfer it onto Sudama's hand. So they're thinking that Krishna is just one of the boys and he's holding up the hand, you know, get, let someone else take a shot. So they're not seeing Krishna's supremacy, and that is the opulence that these devotees have. We don't see Krishna's supremacy because we're so conditioned, we don't hardly even believe in God. <laughs> very, very, um, if you think that Sudama is not able to support Govardhan Hill, then at least you should change hands. Instead of supporting with your left hand, please transfer it to your right hand so that we can give your left hand a massage. Uh, this is an instance of intimacy, showing how much the Vyasas consider themselves to be equal to Krishna. And Krishna allows that, because that is the eternal relationship. And if you want to be in that relationship with Krishna, then we can be, if, that's, uh, if Krishna allows that. So just before we go... So there's, <clears throat> in Gokula, Krishna's Vyasas are generally divided into four groups. One, the well-wishers, two friends, three confidential friends, and four intimate friends. So we see within different categories of friends, there's subcategories as well. So in this way, uh, there's an opportunity for everyone to relate to Krishna uniquely. And Krishna is able to do that, as mentioned in the... Sri Upanishad that the Supreme Lord has been fulfilling everyone's desires since time immemorial. We can't even satisfy our own desires or one other person's. Prabhupada mentions in the purport to that verse that we can't even satisfy one person sufficiently. What to speak of Krishna satisfies everybody. You can say, well, I'm not satisfied. That's because we've ignored Krishna. We've taken to a path of the two world which won't satisfy us. But he's saying, stop pouring oil on the fire. Come this way, you'll be satisfied. <clears throat> so there's a lot to be said about this, but I guess we'll just stop there unless anyone's got any questions. Any comments or questions? Yes, no? Very good. It's Kongaravind the key. So Prabhupada key. Kantaraj Mad Bhagavatam key. Itai Gora Prey Mande. Oh.